Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It's Monday, April 15th. It's tax day. And uh, Mark, I know you'll be amused by this, but someone had asked me, oh, can you come on the air on, I'm not going to say where, a particular platform and uh, tell people what they should do on tax filing day? And I said, no, I'm busy. <laughs> if, if you haven't done it by now, then, you know, what are you going to You know, say? you're just going on extension. So everyone relax. Um, if you did wait till the bitter end today, that is so not our Jill on Money kind of person. I mean, maybe, maybe you just waited to actually push the send button because you owed taxes. But even when I owe, and I do owe usually every year, I usually send the money like a few days before, just a double, triple, quadruple check. Do you do that also, Mark? Oh, I always do it a few days before. I, I never want to go right up to the last day. I know. We're both such wimps. We're like, oh, I never would do it that day of. Anyway, if uh, you found out something interesting about your life and your taxes, that is actually very good because sometimes this is the greatest time in year to do a check-in with yourself and to really try to figure out what is going on and what you can take away from some of the planning work that you've just done. So if you would like to maybe push through some of the inertia you've been feeling, maybe tax time will do it. So why don't you just get in touch with us? Go to jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button, and let us know if you would be willing to come on the air. While you are on the website, do not forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter. And also, you can, this is so cool, you can also subscribe to Jill on Money Live. That's where we have access, where we, where you have access to quarterly live webinars, bonus video content, a lot going on there. So check it out. Today, we are joined by Jennifer, who's on the line from Washington State. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? Hi, Jill and Mark. Um, I'm fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity. I'm uh, super excited to, to talk with you all. Excellent. What's going on? How can we help you out? I'm interested in getting some help on where to focus so I can have um, the most flexibility, uh, most freedom to choose a work travel mix uh, starting in the next few years. Okay. So what you want to figure out is how much money do I really need to like sock aside and know that I can do work travel, like work and travel, or do you want to be able to work wherever you do travel? Um, more the former. Um, okay. I've listened to enough of your podcast and others to know that that in general, humans aren't great at having a, a working career and then dropping off a cliff and having mm. no work. Mm. Um, plus, I'll probably be less annoying to myself if I have something to occupy my time in the form of work. I like that you say annoying to yourself. I'm not annoyed by you at all. So I'm sorry that you have <laughs> not uh, joined in here. Uh, Jennifer, how old are you? I am 52. Okay. And are you partnered, single, married? What do you got? Um, I am partnered. Uh, she lives in another state and we uh, don't combine. We're independent in terms mm. of uh, finances. Okay. But all right. So we're going to leave. I'm just going to leave her off on the side there. You should, of course, focus on her 100%. But I'm just saying uh, for financial purposes, I'm not. I'm only planning based on what you're telling me. You're not necessarily combining. And also, are you responsible, though, for taking care of her? No, I'm not. Okay. Okay. Got it. Right now you're working and uh -huh. you earn how much? Um, last year it was around 400,000. Uh, uh, this year it's going to be probably in the low 300s. Is that new for you? Is that something that you've been making? Have you been earning that much money for a long period of time? Prior to this, uh, this particular position, I was uh, in the mid to high 100s. Oh my gosh. So this was a huge jump. Uh, it, it, it was a significant jump, and I, uh, I, I, I've tried my best not to uh, be victim of lifestyle inflation mm -hmm. while still enjoying my life. You know, I, I, I kept my old, uh, my old truck for twelve years, so I didn't, I didn't run out and buy anything new. Well, until last year. Okay, but. I can't wait to hear about what what we did last year. But hold on a second. So, let's talk a little bit about the amount of money you have saved based on the old income and also now, like what have you accumulated so that I can figure out how to do this work travel thing? Sure, I'll give you the rundown. Um, in uh, rollover IRAs, I have 1.2 million. Woo. In uh, Roth IRA, I have 818,000. I have 71,000 that's vested in the current company's 401k. I contribute 6%, we get a 50% match. They match 50% up to the 6%, right? 
Yes. Okay, got it. Just want to make sure I got that. So yeah. what about, so that's retirement, rollover Roth, current 401k. Do you also have a brokerage account? I do. I have 200000 in a brokerage account. I've got 300000 in cash. What for? I've got a little. Why is that so much so high? Uh, well, as I, as I mentioned in my email, Jill, one of my life's philosophies is to always have an escape plan and a getaway vehicle. I like that. Very good. Have you felt like now that you're making this much more money, have you felt, I mean, of course, as you said, you don't want to have lifestyle drift, but like, how, are you spending more money now? Uh, I, I do spend more money there uh, monthly. There, there are a couple of reasons for that. Um, I recently relocated uh, to another state. Um, so Washington State, as you mentioned, and I kept my, my uh, I have a paid for home back in my, the state where I came from. Mm -hmm. And um, and I, I receive a rental income from that that nets me about fourteen hundred, fourteen fifty a month. So I was I was living uh, at a my housing costs were very low mm. next to nothing in my former state because I own the house and here I pay thirty six hundred a month in rent thankfully offset a little bit by that by that rental income um, and in, uh, so that's one increase in my expenditures um, I did pay cash for the car that I bought last year so I'm good on that um, and then my other big expenditure is travel. And I've, I've really uh, started to prioritize that more than I have in the past. So I'm not judging you. You're making 300 something thousand dollars. Okay. What do you, what do you guess with this current situation? So that means include your rent and, and also the rental income, but what do you really think your expenses are running? A again, it doesn't have to be exact, an approximate guesstimate. Sure. I uh, uh, ran, ran through those numbers. And with the life that I like to have now, which it, which does include a healthy travel budget, uh, it's about 10000 a month. Is this new company um, going to entitle you to a pension of any sort? No. Okay. Do you feel like, like, give us an idea of what you think you'd like to happen, like, uh, besides the escape plan with a getaway vehicle. But I mean, like, what do you what would you like to happen over the next 10 or 15 years? Uh, well, I, I'd like for a few things to happen a little bit before uh, 10 or 15 years. OK, um, um, so what I what I'd like to do in the nearer term is work in my profession for, say, the next three years at most. And mm -hmm. while I do love it, I. Um, I just thought maybe of shifting gears in my mid fifties and mm -hmm. add a little bit of texture to my life. Maybe try something else. Okay. I'm, I'm definitely not, um, definitely not a fan of, uh, as I mentioned, just dropping off a cliff and not working at all. Um, mm -hmm. I do want to continue to work, but maybe, maybe something that's a bit more flexible. Uh, so when we think about that, I'm going to put this down. So three years of work in the low three hundreds, continuing to save a lot of money. Then at age 55 until some period of time, you'll tell me when, what is the hope in terms of some income at that for that? Let's call it your off ramp. That's your off ramp period. Like three years, you're going, you know, pedal to the metal. Now you're going to ease up. We're getting over to the side. We're exiting. And now we've got an off ramp. How long is that off ramp off ramp going to last? And how much do you think you can earn during that period of time? Um, I'm thinking an off ramp of uh, maybe around five years, five five to seven years, which will bring me to my early sixties. Mm -hmm. Thinking a ballpark fifty, seventy five thousand, something yeah. something pretty easy, pretty uh -huh. flexible, something you know you could like just bank, right? Okay, I got that much, right? And at that point, would you move back to the to your the home that you own in your prior state? Um, that's not my first choice. Um, just it's it's just it's so dang hot there. Um, so that that'll that'll keep me away. Um, okay, wait. Then so, I want to have, I have another question for you before that you go. That tell me how much that house is worth right now. Uh, on a good day, she's a bungalow, and she's about three fifty or three seventy five. Is there any reason why we should not sell that in three or four years? Only it would uh, only be for sentimental reasons, or if I wanted, if I couldn't have a paid off. My idea is to have a paid off home somewhere so I don't have a mortgage. Mm -hmm. I, I just, I just, I don't think it's going to be that one for me just because of the location. Okay. I got you. I mean, it's just like, you're not making that much money on this asset that is, you know, again, worst case, you know, a $350,000 asset, but I mean, it's not terrible, but it's, it's okay. But uh, it is equity 
that is available in some form to do something with. Do you think that I could wrangle you for three years and then go 55 to 62? Does that seem fair? You said five to seven years, but maybe maybe it'll be, let's see it's at five. So then what happens at age 60? You're done making your 50 or 75 grand a year. Then what? I mean, it's a long retirement. You could live for three or four more decades. Right. Uh, I, yeah, I, I sure hope so. Uh, then what? Um, probably uh, would shift into um, additional volunteer uh, opportunities. That doesn't sound like income to me. You see where I was going with that? I wanted income, but okay. No income for me. No income for you, Jill. So then I'm waiting until your full retirement age or age 70. So at age 67, do you know what your social security benefit would be? I do. Just over 3,800. And what about at age 70? Just over 4,800. I like that one better, don't you? I love that one. I want to hug that one. I know. Me too. How's your health? Good? It is good. Longevity in the family? Uh, Early 80s. Okay. That's a good number. Uh, Late 80s is good as long as you have your brains. When you say work travel, like you do want some base, right? I do. Yeah. The idea here is do we have the money to get you where you need to go? How much are you? Okay. You're putting 6% away into the 401k. What else are you saving in addition to that 6% of your 300 something thousand dollars? Sure. At a minimum, and this depends on when uh, my uh, RSUs vest, et cetera, at a minimum, I'm adding 3000 a month to that brokerage account. It can go anywhere from 3000 to uh, a few months ago, I put, I put 30,000 in it. So, hmm. but a minimum of three a month. Okay. So in addition to uh, like the 18 or 20 something thousand dollars that's going into the retirement account, then you have this three grand a month and that's going to remain consistent, we think, right? Just, I mean, because your your income was so much larger last year. Now it's in the low 300s, but do you think it's going to go up again or do you think that it is, should we presume low 300s for the next three years? Yeah, I think it's uh, safer to, to assume between three three fifty for the next few years. Yes. Okay, got it. Okay, that's good. So, how? What? Let me ask you a question. If you had to choose between working more in this iteration of your life, like from fifty two, like if you say from fifty two to fifty eight, ver- uh, would you rather like put in a couple extra years this at this level? Or would you rather put in more time working in the next period during the off ramp period? If you had, if you had to choose, I'm not saying you have to, I'm just saying if you did have to choose. Uh, I would, I would choose my, my current state. Yeah. I would work a few more years with what I have. Okay. I mean, I think that there's a few issues here, not issues. It's not like a terrible thing, but obviously, you know, we don't have a ton of options when you say I'm going to stop working at age 55, you could, you could certainly invoke the rule of 55. Here's the deal. There's this rule from the IRS. So you are probably thinking, I got to work till I'm 59 and a half to get this money out of my rollover account. And there's a lot of money in there, right? But there is a uh, potential, this rule of 55, which is essentially at age 55, you say to the IRS, I have a bunch of money in my 401k. So let's just pretend instead of a rollover account and a 401k, you have one 401k. You take all the rollover money, you roll it into your 401k. And now instead of 1.2 and 71, we we mush them together. And now you have, let's just call it $1.3 million in your 401k. And let's also then presume that you work for three more years. You put the contribution and they put the contribution and everything grows. And let's just pretend you're at age 55 and you've got a million and a half dollars in your 401k. You can essentially invoke a rule that says to the IRS, I am taking money out of my 401k at age 55. I am invoking the rule of 55 and I'm going to take this money out over a period of time. So let's say that you decided, okay, from age 55 to age 70, this could be kind of a fabulous thing for you. From 55 to 70, every year I'm going to take out, let's call it $100,000 from my 401k. Every year you take it out, you pay the tax that's due, right? You're going to need to pay your taxes, sadly. And 
by the time you reach your age 70, you have all the money, like basically your 401k is dead, complete, done. But you still have your Roth and you still have your brokerage account. And to me, those are quite valuable to you. You will now also alleviate that pressure of having to have the required minimum distribution later. Then you have your social security kicks in at 4,800. It'll be more than 4,800, obviously, because of inflation adjustments. But you'll have other money to pad your numbers. And if you let's just pretend you're like, I don't need exactly 400,000 out of the 401k every year. I'd still take it out because I would like to just empty that account, pay the tax that's due on it. And if you're making extra money in the, you know, your off-ramp years, you can just add it to your brokerage account. And then I think this could actually work. I'm not so sure about the housing part of it. I really don't know the answer to that. I guess that from from the perspective of if you if you had to sell that place, did you you know, maybe you would buy something else, but you'd have to really want to live someplace. There's no use to just like buy for the sake of buying. It doesn't really matter. And it, I guess it also depends on how much you're traveling and, you know, what, whether this 100,000, this uh, 10,000 a month or 120,000 a year is getting much bigger. It's smaller. I don't know. It's kind of like, we'll have to see. But actually, when I when you were first telling the story, I thought, oh, she's going to have to sell this house right away because we're going to have to. But not necessarily. And maybe the rent will be enough. Or maybe you'll say, I don't want to deal with this as a rental. I'm going to sell it. I'm going to rent somewhere else. And let's see if something else comes up. I think that this works. What I am not exactly sure about is the housing aspect. If you say to, to me, I just want to own something that gives me a huge sense of security. I get that. But I, I, whatever you sell the house that you own for, then you know that's what you have to spend on your new place. Because what is clear to me is that adding a mortgage into, your, into this might actually not be great. And additionally, if you say, well, no, I don't really want a mortgage because I'm sort of allergic to a mortgage. But if all of a sudden you say, I need to invade my brokerage account to pay for a different kind of home, I'm going to come back to you and I'll say, okay, well, either then that off-ramp work has to continue for a longer period of time, or you have to reduce your expenses, which may happen naturally. You may decide, I don't want to do as much travel in my, you know, from 55 to 70, you might be like a travel animal. And then at 73, you might be like, I'm not traveling as much. I've, I've scorched the earth. It's been great. But I think you can do this, Jennifer. I'm excited. Okay. Um, I was, um, I had a, a, a little a moment of white hot panic when uh, I just, I, I, you know, directionally, I, I, I think I'm, I'm headed in an all right place. And I, I, I think I've saved a decent amount of money. A great amount of money. But sometimes, Jill, I got to tell you, I, I think, what does a girl have to do? Like, how much mm. money does a girl have to save? Yeah, I get you um, because it, 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 you know, I think also what happens is we move our own goalposts. So I'm, I presume okay. if I spoke to you 20 years ago and I said to you, Jennifer, you know, at 32, if I said, you're going to have two and a half million dollars saved by the time you're 52, you would look at me wide eyed and say, that's impossible. There's no way I could do that. And yeah. you do. That's what you have. And that doesn't even include the equity in your home. If you want to give yourself that off ramp, great. You should totally do it. And if you need an escape plan with a getaway vehicle, you've built that for yourself. You've created your own escape plan. The getaway vehicle is gassed up and ready to go. The question that will plague you, which I cannot answer, is whether you actually want to invoke the escape plan or not. And you don't have to. You might be like, that's all right. Now that I know I can do it, I'm super scared about it. That makes me nuts. Okay, maybe. But you don't have to worry. There's nothing bad that's going to happen. The more you work, the better the plan gets. But the more you work, the more you work. So you can't, you know, you have to give yourself permission to invoke the plan. Okay, if you, like Jennifer, want to join us on the air and figure out what big questions you want answered, all you need to do is go to our website, jillonmoney.com, click the Contact Us button, and we will get your note. If you want to join us live, check that box. Mark does everything else. While you're on the website, check out all of our content. It lives there. Happy Tax Day, everybody. 
Don't forget to do something nice for someone else today. Someone probably does need a little bit of something, a little boost because they're going on extension and life ain't going to be much better six months from now. They're going to do it all over again. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 